Family Theater presents Jeff Chandler and Lisbeth Scott. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Flying Dutchman, starring Jeff Chandler. Lisbeth Scott will be your hostess. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we're to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, The Flying Dutchman, starring Jeff Chandler. Flying Dutchman, that imaginary character seen in fancy a thousand times by the sailor man from Iceland to the Cape, from Singapore to the New World. The Flying Dutchman, destined, according to legend, to sail the seas forever. September 12, 1672. There is only this log to witness what I do. My compass reads east by northeast. My mains and royals are bursting with the west wind that blows across my quarter. This morning, the great crescent of my horizon was broken. What shore? Will this be the answer? Make it so. Make this the time, the place that halts my ceaseless wandering. The sound of cannon fire is still one of the signs of civilization. The art of warfare only improves with time. It doesn't disappear. I can see the top rigging of the ships that survived the battle as my ship works its way through the remnants of those that did not. No sign of life, only a spar, a hatch cover blasted from the mother ship. Ahoy, the ship! And there is life. Ahoy, the ship! Hold fast, I'll throw you a line. There you are, sir. Hold until I lash the captain to the boy. Now, monsieur! Uh, thank you, monsieur. I did not hope ever to be brought to safety. The Captain Duvray here is near to exhaustion. This is a Dutch ship. And you are Dutch. Take your hands from me! Uh, Let go of me! I'll see every one of you dogs at the bottom of the sea! I don't understand. Let me help you. You're so exhausted. Take your hands from me, I say! I'll see you all dead before you take me prisoner. I expected no praise or thanks for dragging two half-dead men from a blood-stained sea, but this I expected even less. He is right. I am Dutch. And he and his captain are French. Their dress and their speech. Gentlemen, it pleases me to see that you are recovered. Captain, I offer you my full board and accommodations. I presume they are satisfactory. Your name, monsieur? I beg your pardon, Captain, for my oversight. I am Captain Henrik de Reuter. You are right, Lieutenant. He is a Dutchman. Yes, and if I had a sword, there would be one less to plunder the shores of France. Well then, Captain de Reuter is still our host, and we his prisoners of war. War? Then Holland and France are at war? But yes, Captain. For these past three years, they've been in a state of siege. I'm most unhappy to hear this, my friends. You see, I... I've been at sea for five years. This news had not reached me. Mm. Now that you know the facts, Captain, what do you propose to do? I, I have a peculiar relationship with my country. Though it is still my country, I cannot lay claim to it. This allows me to treat you not as my prisoners, but as my guests. I intend to bring you to your destination. Land should be under the bowsprit by eight bells of the morning watch. If you'll excuse me, I must take my place at the wheel and check our course. Our course? But he didn't ask what our course should be. He will bring us nowhere but to Holland. How could he know where your castle is? Somehow, I believe the captain means what he says. As I stand here, Orion off the starboard blinks its assurance that the coast of France lies ahead. The sight, sound, and smell of Earth will be mine again. 
It will be strange to me. <laughs> a few years away can almost erase the realness of so many things. What fate may lie hidden along that wooded shore where my ship seeks safe anchorage? My atonement may lead me in many directions, but I can only move with the tide of eternity and the ocean and hope that this time the answer will come. Merlin, come here. Yes, Captain. Through this porthole, look. Pontier, how could this be? Yes, right through the very door of my castle at Pontier. I shall not question Captain de Reiter as to how. So far as he has kept his word. Your guards are firing on us. They will have our range the next shot. Will you come on deck, gentlemen? Well, proceed, Merlin. Yes, Captain. After you, Captain Dubray. Your home guards seemed a trifle concerned when we came in, Captain, so I took the liberty of raising the French flag. It, it seems to have satisfied them for now. <laughs> Much better than a cannonball in the water line, Monsieur de Reiter. There's no need to lower a small boat. I, I see there is one coming from the dock now. Oh, probably the... But, Captain, I don't see any of your crew. Uh, they are all below, Captain. My orders. You must tell me how you maintain such excellent discipline, Captain Narrator. I, I couldn't ask for a more effective crew, Captain Duvray. And this, too, is an amazing display, bringing me to the threshold of my home. You see, I had discerned your ship was the Lorraine and... The Dutch have reason to remember her home port. Ah, there you see, Merlin. Are you satisfied? You expected something mysterious, Lieutenant? Perhaps. There are many things to answer. Well, whatever those answers, for such a service and kindness, give me the opportunity to repay you. I offer you the hospitality of my castle, Captain De Reiter. They are most generous. I feel compelled to accept. Entree, Captain, and consider this your home while you are here. Thank you. Father, oh, Father, you are back. When we heard the sounds of battle last night, our hearts were as if in a press. Are you all right? <laughs> in perfect health, as you can see, uh, for which we have this gentleman to thank. Oh. Uh, this is Monsieur de Reiter, my daughter, Marie. Marie. Mademoiselle, I, I find bringing your father back doubly worth the effort now. I thank you for bringing father safely home. <laughs> but I believe the captain would most appreciate food and a room at this moment, Marie. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. I'll arrange it immediately. Will you come with me, monsieur? We shall see you at supper, captain. Yes, indeed you shall. Captain, I believe we should be cautious of this Dutchman. No, 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 no. You are wrong, lieutenant. If De Reiter wished to harm us or France, he need never have gone to the trouble of helping us. And as long as Captain De Reiter is a guest in this castle, I shall not permit further discussion of the matter. It was very kind of you to escort me to my rooms. I suppose now you will return to more properly greet the lieutenant. The lieutenant? Why do you ask? I had gathered from Monsieur Moulin's tone he didn't approve of your meeting me or, or even of my being here. Lieutenant Moulin's a bit too presumptuous and has taken a great many things for granted in the past. I fear that you two are verging on the same. I shall see you at supper, Monsieur de Reiter. Uh, Mademoiselle, wait. <laughs> Yet, I, I had to know. At the risk of seeing those warm brown eyes lose their compassion, I had to know if this Morlan meant anything to her. Marie! Marie, what are you doing out here alone? I come here often, Raoul. I feel at home with the song of the gulls and the sea. Marie, I have known you and been aboard your father's ships for three years now. For, for the past year, I have felt that we should think of marriage. I love you, Marie. I know, Raoul. But you see, I don't love you. You were certainly more willing to please, and never so cruel before that Dutchman arrived. Monsieur de Reiter has nothing to do with my actions or what I say. Nothing to do with them, huh? Don't you think even a fool could see the look in his and in your eyes when you met today? I told your father that Dutchman would bring no good. Forgive me, Raoul. There is nothing I can do. May we go to supper? 
No, there is nothing you can do. But there is something I can do. October 21, 1672. My stay here cannot be more pleasant. The castle grounds are made for two people to share. I love the lowlands of Holland, but the beauty here seems to surpass even tulip time. The poet has exhausted his vocabulary trying to express the grandeur that lies in just one autumn leaf. And here I am surrounded by them. Even the birds whirl madly as if dizzy with the gold that lies in nature's treasure chest. To fill the foreground of all this is Marie. I almost forgot at times my reason for existing. Almost, but not quite. When I hear the signal of the gulls and the waves struggle to engulf the shore, I know that my life is entwined with theirs. Henrik, what are you thinking? Thoughts that a, a sweet soul such as yours should never know. Oh, but I do know. Not what they are, but how they feel. How do they feel? They are heavy and torn with sadness. Henrik, they hurt me, knowing you carry them. Oh, if, if only I could explain. Oh, don't let this trouble you too, Henrik. Can't I make you forget? Oh, yes, you do, my dear. Speak no more of it. I want to. Maybe I can find a solution. One that you have missed. No, Mary, this, this is mine alone. Perhaps someday you will know. <sighs> this air is getting sharp. Shall we go in? Oh, you're cold. Here, let me put my coat around you. It'll... Mary. Oh, I'm warmer now. Keep me that way, Henrik. he has been here. Six weeks in which to spy on our fleet and armies. Rest assured, Captain De Ruyter will do us no harm. Certainly, sir. You are right, of course. I... I thought perhaps I would go to the city tonight. May I have permission? Oh, but yes, Raoul. A leave would do you well. A young man needs to join the cavaliers at the tavern on occasion. Thank you, sir. May I be excused? I shall get ready to depart. I will return tomorrow noon. October 31, 1672. I feel that something is stirring to break my stay here. The garden no longer holds the charm it had for me in the short weeks past. The castle has stiffened around me as if to tell me to go. Not Captain Duvray nor Marie. Only the cold stone of the walls seem to speak to me. This cannot be, they say. Your place is not in the heart of Marie, not in the warm suite of rooms. But with your face into the setting sun and your hand on the wheel, your feet feeling the surge of a strong running current beneath the keel. I shall see Duvray at once. Captain, I must leave. Leave? But why? I've had a very enjoyable stay here. I, I think the time has come to end it. I don't wish to take advantage of your hospitality. I see. But, uh... I had thought there was something more to hold you here than our uh, hospitality. True, there, there is. And it is one of the reasons I must go. This decision, it came quite suddenly. Is there something you could tell me, Captain? Please don't, don't ask me to explain. I can't. I don't know all the reasons myself. Father, Henry, quickly! Hey. What is it, ma'am? Morlin, he has just returned. We had a call. He told me he has reported that father is harboring a Dutch spy. The Duke and his soldiers are on their way here now. Oh, this means I must leave at once. Marie, as long as I live, I will always remember you. And your kindness, Captain Duvray. Oh, take me with you, Henri. Take me with you. I can't take you, though all my being demands it. Very touching. A most tender party. It is too bad that you're not going anywhere, Dutchman. And as for you, Captain Duvray, you'll spend the rest of your days in the dungeons of Pontier. Then where will our fair Marie turn, huh? No, De Ruyter, you're not going any place. 
Oh, you, sir! Put down that sword, Lieutenant. This is an order. Stand aside, you old fool! Consider what you're doing, Moulin. You disobey your superior. When such a superior officer becomes so soft in the brain as to trust you, then it is time to end his career. Draw your weapon or I shall run you through regardless. I refuse to duel with you. Coward! Now you see what your lover is, Marie. <laughs> Defend yourself, man! He can't! That is not blood that runs from his arm. It is water! Very well, Merlin. So shall it be. Prepared to wet the tip of my blade. Yeah, I have a plan, Morlan. I wish to make this as fair for you as, as I can. If once more you force lunge as you did, the duel will be over. So watch yourself. Uh, force lunge, you say. And the writer! Correct, Lieutenant. Like this, that's it. I warned you, Morlan. <laughs> I must hurry and honor to find your heart. <laughs> The excitement of the moment gone, I feel the pain in my arm. He has made his mark. This wound on my arm will disappear, but the one on my soul will not. There on the floor is testimony that again, I have killed. Can I never escape from the circle that draws me to this, that renews the bond between myself and my fate? Give me release. Stop this wretched half-life, half-death that I am. Let me settle into the dust from which I came and, and forget. Forget. Henrik, you're bleeding. Oh, it's hardly through the skin. There's no time to trouble ourselves with it. You must go, Captain Dereiter. There is no explanation of your presence that would satisfy the Duke. And now this... My ship is standing by in the harbor. We will all go. No, no, no. This I cannot do. I must stay here and at least try to save my honor. You too go. I shall hold the soldiers until you reach the ship. Oh, I won't allow you to, Father. Come with us, please. No, no. Go, my daughter. I would rather die than run. You're a brave man, Captain Dufresne. There will be other times for such talk. Go, I say. Is there another exit to the dark path? Yes, follow me, Henrik. Goodbye, Father. We're almost to the dark. In a moment, we'll be free. Off to the side. Hurry. Coming up the road from the dark. But I tell you, Colonel, the, the ship has no one aboard, not one sailor. Well, then they must still be in the castle. Did you set a guard at the dock? Six men, sir. Good. Back to the castle. There's only one last chance. Did I really convince myself that I could stem that inexorable tide? Like a giant wave, it tosses me high on the shore, tumbles me about, and then returns me to the deep with its undertow. The plan forms in my mind now as we enter the small door leading to the main hall of the castle. Mary is ahead of me, her delicate form tense with the events so foreign to her. This night she will never forget, but her tomorrows will be happier for it. I'm sorry, Colonel. I cannot allow you to search this castle. My rank does not permit me to question this, sir, but... The Duke has issued my office. Then it will be necessary for the Duke to carry them out. It won't be long, sir. He's on his way here now. Until that time, Colonel. Please, leave these premises. Very well, Captain. I shall be back. Father! Marie, I prayed you'd reach the sheep. The Duke's guards have surrounded the area. There must be a way, Henri. Down the cliff. To what? The rocks and sea? No, here, here, come to the window. The countryside is covered with the torches of the hunters. Oh, then it is hopeless. Not hopeless if you will do as I say. I will try. Good. What will you have me do? The, the dueling pistols in your study. Get one and bring it to me. See that it is loaded and primed. What are you going to do? Get the pistol, if you please, Captain Dufresne. Very well, monsieur. Mary. Mary, if you find it difficult to understand what is about to take place, remember this. I love you. My personal desires must be sacrificed. If it feels as though your heart is being wrested from your breast because of me, that will vanish. And a wisdom you never thought possible will come in its stead. Kiss me now. Wait for the time to pass so you may see the truth of what I say. The pistol. Turn the gun around and fire the charge, Captain Duvray. Fire. You must be insane. You can't mean what you say. I mean precisely that, and do it now. Oh, no, Henri. Don't listen to him, Father. I tell you, this is the only answer left, Duvray. If you do, Father, aim second for my heart. You... You mean that, Mary? You would... I... I... Oh, why does Enough. that... Enough. 
Fire, Dufrey, fire. I can't do it, Henrik, I can't. You must shoot, I say shoot. No, no, I... <laughs> I, I did not mean to pull the trigger. So, you found the Dutchman before we did, Captain Dufresne. The Duke is here and will be pleased to see that you have exonerated yourself by killing this spy. Yes. I... I'm sure he will be. Marie, there is nothing more to be done here. Good night, Dutchman. November 1, 1672. The sails are set and the great wheel begins to turn again. To stop when the time is right for another test. Where do the winds lead me now? What lies beyond those swells that pound at the bow of my ship? Only time will tell. When we think of family prayer, we usually picture mothers, fathers, and their children gathered in the home, saying their prayers together for a few minutes in peace and harmony. When this can be done, it's a beautiful and rewarding moment of the day. But we have to remember that many, many of our families are or will be scattered. Military service, business, the trades, the professions we're trained in, tear us apart. But this doesn't mean we love each other less. The important thing to remember is that actually, we need never grow apart. We can preserve the great value of family unity. We know our own, and our own know us, as few others will take the trouble to know us. And it is prayer for each other that can and will bind us all to each other in a real and valid union. We can bring all of us together at some time each day in a unity that comes from God's protection of families that remain faithful to him in simple and humble prayer. Though we be at opposite ends of the earth, we're united. And in this great and wholesome way, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Hollywood Family Theater has brought you The Flying Dutchman, starring Jeff Chandler. Lisbeth Scott was your hostess. Others in our cast were Jay Novello, Joy Terry, Jack Lloyd, and William Woodson. The script was written by Kurt Martell, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Dunbar Conspiracy, starring Jean Lockhart, Kathleen Lockhart, and Betty Lynn. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.